body of me. Now you've stood up, please sit down. <laughs> Lovely to see you on this first Sunday after Easter. We have um, some bands to read, so I'm just going to read those first. I published the Bands of Marriage between Daniel Jacob Smith, single of the parish of Carmel Peninsula Tea Ministry, and Charlotte Rose Nicholson, also single of the Carmel Team, um, Peninsula Team Ministry. Uh, and this is the first time of asking. It doesn't say. If anybody knows any reason why this should not be, please uh, let us know. We're going to start with our first hymn, which is 143. Come you faithful race of strength. in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, 
yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed through much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O oh God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises, declare unto mankind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we bless thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
and it does go over the page. And if you would say the bold verse, please. So Psalm 118, 14 to 29. The Lord is my strength and my soul. He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the words of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely and he will not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for your answer to me and have not become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is the Lord. He has shined upon us. From the procession with branches, the halls of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please sit for the first reading. saying, Do you not straightly command you that you should not teach in his name, in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man to blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom we slew and hanged on a tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so it is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Here ended the first lesson. Stand to sing the TDM, we will say, sing all of the left hand side and the whole of the bottom.
gospel reading is taken from uh, John chapter 20, beginning at the 19th verse. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After, this, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent you, sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark, the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the lesson. It's time to sing the Jubilee today.
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Christ, our Son, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in whose in, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the third collect the grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that in all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, thy sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our second hymn, Love's Redeeming Work is Done, 150.
words of my mouth and the thoughts and feelings of all our hearts and minds be forever acceptable in your sight. Amen. So I read the readings today and immediately this idea of witness became really clear. But in order to be able to witness God's love for us and tell people about it, we have to have that faith, we have to believe. And of course in the readings we had a locked room and we have Jesus suddenly appearing and he says to them, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so am I sending you. And that was a really important message, and that's the message to us too, to be witnesses, to go out to talk about God's love. And Thomas wasn't there, of course, and Thomas was, um, was doubting. And so eight days later, Jesus comes again to a locked room, and Thomas is there. And he allows Thomas to do the physical thing that Thomas needs to um, understand that he has risen from the grave. And then Thomas says, my Lord, and my God, and he fully understands. And Jesus' answer to that is, have you believed because you have seen me? Then blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And that is us. However strong our faith is, we need that help, don't we? And then he goes on to say, this is written so that you may have life in his name. So, some of us went to the Lent course. Uh, I managed to go to four of them. I missed the last one for obvious reasons because I had to be in Oxford to be a grandma. Um, and thank God for that. And um, in the Lent course, we were looking at differences and understanding each other. And from that comes this amazing concept of mutuality. And I'm sure you know what mutuality is, but I'm going to tell you a definition anyway. Mutuality is, apparently, the sharing of feelings, action, or relationship. And that is what Jesus is asking us to do in our witness to people that we know in everyday life. On Thursday, we had our APCM for the PCC for this church, and we have two new members, John Houston and um, Louise Shrapnel, are now on the PCC, and they joined us. And one of the things that we have put on the minutes that we discussed then was the need to, to keep refreshing and keep thinking about the life of the church and how we can get more people involved. And then lastly, um, Ben has written a really lovely insert in the magazine which you may or may not have received yet, but we got ours yesterday. And he's linked, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he's linked the thoughts to the crisis in Ukraine because of course we are witnessing true terror in the world at the moment. And he was talking in this about uh, uh, YWAM, why, why which is a youth group working in Kiev. And there was just one post here that I wanted to share with you. This person says, who is working, delivering food to people in cellars and so on. I never thought I would see a bulletproof vest flying around our home. I also didn't think it would be something that would fall into the category of things you are grateful for. And then they go on to say, Today we rescued, fed and hosted 55 people from the Chernigov region and we delivered 32 food bags. This is what, this, this is what, our, what we are being asked to do in any way with whatever gifts God gives us. I just want to close with the prayer from St. Benedict. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is the one that Jack told us that we needed to learn about seven years ago. 153, Now the Green Blade Riseth.
so fitting. In the power of the Spirit, who works through all creation, let us pray to the Lord. Bless the Church, created to witness to your name, and inspire her ministry of declaring your forgiveness. Teach us humility, that we may give glory to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the whole world acknowledge your power, the beginning and the end. Be merciful to those who find it hard to believe the good news and grant them faith. We pray for those who are struggling when we see and hear of the atrocities bombarding us in the world, especially in the Ukraine at the moment. 
And in the words of the prayer we have been given, we pray. A prayer for peace. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Look upon our divided world to be with those who are victims of violence. We pray for the people of Ukraine and all who have been subjected to the cruelty of others. Help us to know the gift of your peace in the power of your spirit. And we ask you to soften the hearts of those who can stop the fighting. Creator God, we ask for your aid as your children of light, living in the darkness of our world. Amen. We pray for all areas in the world suffering from war, unrest and natural disasters, such as floods, Syria, Palestine and Africa. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all those bringing aid and medical help to those in war torn countries, including the journalists keeping us informed at the risk to their own lives. We pray for our own health service and thank you for them. We bring you before you areas in our own country where they are struggling to meet the needs of our own health service, which is under pressure. We pray for those waiting a long time for medical attention, operations and ambulance services. We thank you for the patience and care of our doctors and nurses. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our families when we are gathered together and when we are apart. Have mercy on the lonely who feel shut out from the company of others. Help us to be aware of their need and to offer friendship where we can. Lord, in your mercy. We bring before you now any who are suffering from bereavement. Awaiting surgery. Or any medical treatment. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to the departed forgiveness of their sins. May they have eternal life in Christ through his triumph over death. We make our prayers in the name of Christ revealed to us through the eyes of faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised from when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We sing our last and offertory hymn, which is <coughs> number 160. Amen. Amen.